Life on Earth was beyond repair. The planet's resources spent, its capacity for life diminished. Mankind was within mere generations of extinction. Humanity, not one for succumbing to fate, united and launched the most ambitious mission undertaken in its history. It fell to world-renowned physicist Dr. Richard Adams to command an international team of the best and the brightest to crew the Argo the largest space-going vessel ever constructed by man. They were accompanied by Clark, an AI being of remarkable intellect. Their destination, Bernard D, a world that had shown promise of harboring life and, perhaps, a second home for the people of our dying biosphere. The mission would take two decades. The crew's sacrifices would be enormous, but they were bound by a single goal to find a new home. Yet upon their arrival, the crew found their journey to be in vain. Bernard D. was no Eden, but as volatile and inhospitable as the planet they were trying to replace. Upon their return, the Argo's 40 men and women will reluctantly emerge from a deep sleep to greet Earth with devastating news. Yet the world they left was not the world they're returning to. See? No lights. Yeah, none, huh? You said the thing is pitch plus 42? Pitch plus 52. All right. Then have the... Thanks. How big did you say those things were? One colony could hold three million. Three million people? And not a single light? What do you think of that? I honestly don't know. Should I go tell Rich? Yeah, you should be just waking up. Morning, Clark. Is that how long I've been out? That joke never gets old. Never. Health dates? Two. Yeah, what happened? A small amount of interstellar medium penetrated the ship and resulted in a brief power outage which affected Layla Shin's nutrient line, causing a hypoperfusion to all of the vital organs, including the brain, resulting in coma. Who's the tail? Dr. Lewis. And? Dr. Anthony Baker suffered a severe upper respiratory infection and died, most likely due to sepsis. My available antibiotics were insufficient to fend off the infection. Yeah, poor Tony. I've sealed his sleep chamber to quarantine the body. Make sure we set up some kind of memorial for him. Rich, there's a problem. In 200 years. How was that possible? No clue. I ran every vector against the figures I saved before he went under. They're the same. Same delta V, same periapsis distance. Adjustments must have been made while we were asleep. Right. Clark, you know anything about this? Rich, I have to tell you something. Rich?
trying K-bands, microwave, everything. I haven't gotten a single response from anyone. Okay, so no signal, no contact, and we're 200 years late. We just need a couple kinks in the system. We have been over it for quite a while. I don't think it's that simple. Okay, stay at it. It stays quiet until I get some answers, understood? All right. Charlie, you all right? Uh, just woke up. Uh, <laughs> my legs are still pretty stiff. Yeah, mine too. So you know when we'll be docking? Soon. We just gotta work out a few things uh, soon. It's wild, you know? I, when I left, my, my son was, was like, but, but now he's as tall as me or taller even, and probably even has his own kid. I guess I'll get to skip the parenting, go straight to grandparenting. <laughs> That's the best of both worlds. Hey, why don't you go talk to Doc Lewis? Make sure you're thawing out all right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, all right. Charlie. All right. all right. Doesn't make any sense. Rich, I have to tell you something. What is it, Clark? I delayed our return. I received a signal. It was faint, but I recognized its origin. There isn't an easy way to translate it into English, but suffice to say it aroused my worst suspicions. Was it from Earth? Yes. When? Were we in hypersleep? Yes. I made an executive decision and felt it best to delay our return. Well, what do you think it means? I can't say for sure, but I have some theories. Yeah, well, me too. Are yours good? No. Yeah, me neither. Shall I notify the crew? No. Is there anything natural we could uh, blame this on? Something unrelated? You mean lie? Is that necessary? I think we need time. Time to cope. Time to make sense of all this. I don't see how lying is in any way beneficial. They will discover it all in time. It'll seem like you're keeping something from them. I would rather have them ponder our fates than confirm their worst fears. I still think it's ill-advised. And I think it's ill-advised to tell 40 fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters that our return was delayed a few centuries on a hunch. It is the truth. That's the last thing they need right now, is the truth. Doesn't make much sense, huh? No, Rich. I understand perfectly. Layla's dead. Organ failure. Put her back in her cryo tube. Seemed the best thing to do for the time being. You gonna say something? About this mess we're in? It's all anybody's talking about. They're all wondering what Commander Richard Adams is going to do. Clark, pass me in, will you? Of course, Rich. Everyone, if I can have your attention, please. Well, I understand you all have a lot of questions, but first the facts. There was no miscalculation. We are indeed 198 years ahead in local future. 
173 years past our projected return date. There is, as far as I can make out, a communications blackout or problem with the space station, we are WNL-5. As you know, the blackout extends to Earth. Clark is working on a scenario that involves EPR communication, but that may take a while. Legal 3 is being retrofitted for an excursion inside the colony. So, now's the time. Is there any update on the diagnostics about the cause of the time dilation? Clark? I admit that the decision to return on a later date was mine alone. There wasn't a safe return scenario at that time. Local galactic weather conditions were not permitting a direct approach. It was something we missed. By 200 years? Easy. I can clarify that a little. The entry scenario did not manifest itself until recently. The best approach was to accelerate and increase time dilation. However, as a result, the ship will need treatment for gamma bombardment, which we presently lack the equipment to do. So, what about the skip? When should ask, Rod, suit up. Rich, have we had any contact from anyone? Other bases? Ships? I guess we're calling them colonies now. There is some garbled stuff floating around out there, and we can't quite make it out at this time. So... So no. I know this is difficult. But we'll get to the bottom of it, I promise. So let's get back to work. Adam's out. better clear up a bit or we have some trouble. You're coming through all right. I'm sure she'll clear up. Rich, I just lost it. That's all right. We're gonna go take a look. Stand by. Gamma ray bursts. No. That would explain the communications blackout, as well no, as the- Look out the window, Sam. I can see foliage from here. Burst that size, there wouldn't be a trace of life. It'd be a wasteland. I'm telling you, it was a solar storm. Or an impact of some kind, asteroid or comet. Where's the evidence, Carl? A storm or an impact that size would have left a pretty big mark. Could have hit the ocean, air dispersed. We were prepared for something of that size. Where it would have gotten out. Jan, back me up here. Gamma ray burst. You're both wrong. It wasn't external, but internal. An aggressive and the virulent virus led to a human pandemic of some sort, or an ecological disaster, agriculture failure. Either way, its origin was on Earth. It probably set us back to pre-industrial. What, did it happen in a day? No one would have left word. Pre-industrial means it wouldn't have killed everyone, Jan. There'd be pockets of survivors, and they'd have made contact somehow. I have a hard time believing that viruses kill radio antennas. If you ask for my opinion, I give it to you. What about 
about aliens. What if we initiated first contact and then they wiped us out? You know, like conquistadors and Aztecs or a, whatever the alien equivalent of smallpox blankets would be. So, a race of aliens showed up, distributed quilts which killed everyone, and then just left? It's possible. You are no longer allowed to speak. Enough. Any of you got a pen?
Don't forget, visible signs of plant life. All right. Given everything we know, the signs point to some sort of coronal mass ejection. And, if large enough, the radiation could have a devastating effect on the population. Not bad. If that's the case, where is everybody? I mean, there, there would have been survivors. Right? Five miles. Eight hours of oxygen. You have eight. I got six. So our best bet is going to be able to make it to that connecting tube. See if we can't climb up to easier gravity and then float. Sounds a whole lot like an excuse to just keep exploring, Rich. Let's just keep going. We'll stop if we find something. Oh, yeah, sure. They will run out of O2 and die of asphyxia. We could fall and break a bone. Hell, if we're lucky, we'll just pass out from exhaustion. Come on. At least this explains why we lost contact with the beagle. It does explain the damn thing, Russ. 